Hello and welcome to another episode of the Power Law Investor. Today is the 23rd of September 2025, a Tuesday. And today we'll be talking about CASPA, a PAI update, and also where I see us heading in terms of the Bitcoin price over the next couple of quarters. So as always, this is not financial advice, it's for informational purposes only, so do your own research. And as I'm writing this, Bitcoin is just below 112K and Casper is trading a little bit below 8 cents. And let's get to the end of the, or the big tamale here, which is saying that the current PAI level for Casper is currently at 0 0.3, maybe a little bit lower uh, because the price has dropped down just a bit. And what does that mean? This means that historically, uh, CASPA has been at this level about 44% of the time or lower, right? So that means at this level or lower at 44% of the time, that is based on the history of CASPA, we have about 60% of the time it's been a higher price level. It doesn't say how much higher, but we have been 60% higher than this level uh, before. Right, and how does this PAI work? Well, the PAI is a number, the power amplitude index, that is uh, a number from zero to 1.0. And zero is when it is the coldest, that is the best time to buy. And one is when it's at the hottest or the, bet, the most overbought conditions or the highest point uh, that it's received, that it's done in the past. And the PAI is generated for each asset individually based upon that asset's own previous history. And this graph over here shows that, so, so let me just clarify that, you know, the PAI for Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana will be quite different from the PAI of CASPA, right? It's not a generalized metric. There has to be certainly tuned to each and every asset. And this is a asset that is generated looking at only the values of bit of caspa in backwards in time from where we are right now so for example here in july 24 it's only looking at the prices prior to this it's not based on oh i've looked at the prices in the future also and i've adjusted it. it's not normalized based on today's data it's based on what are the values you would see at that particular period of time and as you can see, in the past, it's performed pretty well. It's highlighted when we've been at major bottoms. It's not perfect, and it can't tell us what the future is like, but it does give us an indication of is this is relatively good time to buy or not, or a good time to be cautious, right? And right now, with a value of 0 0.3, it's telling us, and this is a cumulative graph over here. These are each of the bins, so it's been between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 about 22% of the time, or 23% of the time. And these are the sums of all these three bins. So what it's saying, it's been at 0 0.3 or lower about 44% of the time. So for me, who already has some CASPA here, it necessarily isn't a great time to add to my holdings because I would much rather wait for it to be about here, in which uh, the 0 0.2 and lower, where it's been in this price zone 20% of the time. And that means it has 80% of the time it's been higher prices. So the 20% to 80%, the one to four ratio, uh, one on the downside, four on the upside, looks like a much better time for me personally to buy. But we now need to take a step back and understand how this works from the overall macro cycle that we're in right now and where we are in terms of Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is the king and the alts will follow Bitcoin to a large extent, maybe with a little bit of a lag. And so our best tool for understanding Bitcoin is the power law. And the power law for Bitcoin is basically taking the logarithm of the day since Genesis and the logarithm of the price, plotting that and looking at the trend line. And as you can see, the trend line here is very accurate. And if we make the assumption, and it can be a big assumption, that the future is going to be like the past, then we can make estimates on what the price of Bitcoin should be and what it is going to be a certain amount of period forward, time forward in the, past, in the future. And when we look at that, we end up with a graph that looks like this. Right? So here's the power law. And you can see that Bitcoin is bouncing around the trend line over here as described by this mathematical equation. Now, this is a mathematically derived equation. If you use the same data that I do, you would end up with exactly the same values over here. So what this tells us 
in a year's time, we're looking at a target price of 145K, right? And Bitcoin currently is about 112K. So maybe a 25% jump from where we are now. But what happens is Bitcoin seems to have these periodic ripples in which it shoots above the trend line every four years. And so if we look back, on this one over here, this is the difference of the actual price from the um, from the trend line price. You see every four years, so November 2013, November 2017, four years, November 21, another four years, and then November 25 is roughly where it should peak again. And that's when you see the crazy amount of appreciation that takes place. And if Bitcoin shoots up over here, then we can expect the rest of the altcoin market to also go there. And so just on a very crude visual basis, these are standard deviation lines from the trend line. You can see that we beat two standard deviations in uh, December 2017. In November 21, we were about one and a half standard deviations. So every cycle is getting lower and lower. And now in 25, we can expect a price probably if the same pattern holds somewhere in this green zone over here. And if you split the green zone in half, you end up with a value of say about 150 ish. So I think it's reasonable that we would get a value of Bitcoin between 150 and 100 and 200 K. And if that happens, you can imagine what is going to happen to the Casper price also, because all the altcoins are going to move up following Bitcoin, because there's a lot of excitement in the market. And so we are now at that stage of the market this quarter or this upcoming quarter, quarter four, 2025, when things are going to take off, if the same pattern that we have with Bitcoin holds. And this is where we want to be maybe a little less cautious than before, particularly if we are looking to get into Caspa or increase our position substantially. I don't know whether we are going to get the 0.2 value again, right? That 0.2 value would mean a price of about six and a half cents at this point. And it is not clear to me whether we are going to get that value. Uh, and so everyone has to make their own judgment about this. For me, I think we are going to get one big shock and we're already in the process of getting that. You know, we were bouncing between around nine cents and now we've dipped below eight cents. So I think it is not a bad time to start DCAing, particularly if you don't have any exposure, but you can make your own judgments on this, right? And this is why this is this quantitative charts that I use for my analysis and they're based on mathematics are telling us, hey, if it's been higher 66% of the time, is this a good deal for you? Or do you want to wait until then it's maybe higher 80% of the time? And for me, I would wait for that. Mm -hmm. And for that, we are going to be looking at a value of about six and a half cents, right? So for me personally, given that I already have some CASPA exposure, I would wait to add to six and at around six and a half cents. That's what's down about 20% from where we are right now. Uh, do we get that price? I don't know. We are getting to the point of the cycle where we expect some explosive moves, but who knows? No one can be can tell us for sure whether that is going to happen. All we can do is look at the evidence and say, look, every four years, we tend to have a peak. And if that peak is happening, it should be happening next quarter. And of course, the timing is not going to be completely uh, perfect every four years. There's always variations. It's going to depend on the liquidity that the overall central banks are putting into the into the world. Uh, it could depend on other conditions that happen with tariffs, etc. So no one really knows. And uh, we all have to hedge our bets accordingly and make the decisions that is right for us. And it may not even be that you want to invest in Caspa. Maybe you find other assets that are more suited to what you want. Uh, but this is just my opinion of where we are in terms of my opinion backed with mathematical facts. And then you guys can make your own investment decisions just as if I'm going to make my own investment decisions. So again, to summarize, we are at a PAI value of 0 0.3 or so. Uh, for me personally, I will be increasing my exposure about six and a half cents. And if we don't get it, I'm happy with that. Um, for you, you guys can look at this chart. And they will be on my website at powerlawinvestor.com. So please sign up uh, to get access. 
and um, you can make your own decisions on what is the right way to proceed. So that's it for this update. Hope everyone is doing well. I will see you on the flip side.